Years ago, when my morning alarm went off, the first thing I would do was roll over and hit the snooze button. You have two options, either hit snooze and go back to sleep in your cozy, soft, comfortable bed, or open your eyes and get out of bed. This decision requires discipline. I didn't have that discipline. I would always choose the easier and more comfortable option. The problem is that since it's the first decision you make when you wake up, you are more likely to make a mistake. In fact, you are saving yourself from a difficult situation, choosing the easy way out. You are training your mind to avoid the easy way out all day long, which leads you to choose the easy path throughout your entire life. Today, I don't feel like doing anything. I was supposed to sit down and prepare a video, but once again, I found myself daydreaming. Do questions like this ever pop into your mind? For instance, what makes a robot better than a human? Is it that it's much stronger than us, or more durable? Or that it can recall any piece of information when asked? I don't think it's any of these. Let me tell you what it is. I believe what truly distinguishes a robot from us and makes it strong is its ability to do exactly what it's asked. No questions asked, every time, without getting tired. You give it a command, and immediately there's action and results. But we humans aren't like that. For example, today I don't feel like working. I can't seem to motivate myself. I know I have to do it. I know the work needs to be done. Things need to be finished. The command is clear. Finish these tasks by the end of the day. But there's an internal resistance that keeps me from doing it. When you think about it, isn't it quite irrational? Wouldn't it be great if that resistance didn't exist and we could easily do everything? Of course, there's an explanation for this. If we want to figure out how to motivate ourselves, we need to understand these mechanisms. So, in this video, I'm going to explain how you can motivate yourself and how the motivation mechanism works. Since this problem is personal, everyone's solutions will be different and unique. That's why I won't be giving you specific advice like, do this or do that. But you'll be able to take away insights and form your own advice based on what you learn. Unlike the command action result chain that robots follow, our chain is different. Ours is a cycle, a loop. Action, reward, motivation. We take an action and get a reward in return. For example, studying for an exam. Even though we don't feel like it, we spend hours working on it. We struggle with problems, but we keep going. And in the end, we manage to get that high grade we wanted. This is a reward, and as a result, it motivates us. We can keep doing the same thing. But as we all know, this process isn't that simple. We can't just press a button and go like a robot. There are obstacles that can break the chain. First of all, many of us look for motivation before taking action. Let me watch this show first, get in a better mood, and then I'll work. But in reality, the action should come first. What we get from that action motivates us afterward. Some psychologists define motivation as the desire to initiate and maintain a specific behavior. So if we don't have that desire to begin with, how do we start the behavior? How do we sustain it? Sometimes, a song can help with this. For some, however, it's a distraction. That's why solutions are personal. But as humans, there are some common influences. To explore these, an experiment was conducted with elementary school students in 1998. The students were given some very difficult puzzles, ones you wouldn't really want to bother with, the kind that's not fun to do. Then all the students were given high marks. But when explaining the high marks, one group was told, you did well because you're smart and talented, while the other group was told, you did well because you worked hard. And here's where the story gets interesting. The students were then asked to solve more puzzles, but this time, not all the puzzles were difficult. Some were very easy, and the students were free to choose which ones to solve. Which group do you think chose the hard ones, and which group went for the easy ones? Take a moment to think about it. I especially want you to think because if you struggle with motivation and you can't guess correctly, this information could be especially valuable to you. Children who were told they were every smart and talented tend to choose simpler problems, and when asked if they enjoyed solving the problem, they respond with, eh. So, there's this situation where they choose simpler problems, but don't really enjoy them much. On the other hand, Children who were told they were every hard-working tend to choose more challenging problems and end up being happier with the result. So, what does this tell us? Does it mean we should constantly tell ourselves we're hard-working? Like, I'm so hard-working. I'm so hard-working. I'm amazing. Actually, the concept I want to touch on is called the locus of control. Simply put, it's the belief in how much control we have over the things in our lives. For example, children who are told they are every smart and talented represent an external locus of control. Because they believe being smart and talented isn't something within their control, it's something hereditary. As a result, they don't think working hard has much of an impact on their success. If environmental external factors play the main role, why should they even try? 
At least that's how they think. On the other hand, children who are told they are hardworking represent an internal locus of control, because being hardworking is something they determine and control. The success they achieve is entirely a product of their own effort. This is where the cycle becomes important. To establish the link between reward and motivation, you need to not just enjoy the reward, you need to see the reward as the product of the intense, effortful process that brought you there. When we associate the reward with the effort itself, we are motivated to work again to reach that reward. The key is to start the chain somewhere, and then don't break it. We often say something like this, do what makes you happy, what you enjoy doing. And this is exactly it. There should be goals, and these goals should be used correctly. But we shouldn't reduce everything down to just these goals. There must be genuine happiness and joy while doing it. If necessary, we should make it enjoyable. No one really enjoys doing household chores like laundry or washing the dishes. But when a family member says something nice after we do them, doesn't it suddenly seem more bearable? Just a single kind word can make things easier to do, and it's something that's very easy to do. Maybe our chain isn't as simple as the one robots have, but isn't that what makes us human? If kind words didn't motivate us, who would these poems and songs be written for? And who knows, maybe one day robots will create their own values in this way. Why not? Thanks for listening, my friend. I hope this video has helped you realize something. If you enjoyed it and want to stay connected, you can support us by subscribing. We love you. Take care of yourself until the next video. Goodbye.